I've been uh, experimenting with my new shorter hair and I think I've finally been able to get it to look suitably vintage. There were uh, several failed attempts though. So hello, welcome back to Retro Claude and in today's video we are doing some vintage knitting! Yay! I've been talking about doing this type of video for ages now and it's finally actually happening thanks to a little collaboration that's happening here on YouTube called Vintage Pool Party. It's being hosted by Gwen of Gwen Shenanigans and essentially you can do whatever you like, you can knit, you can sew, you can crochet, whatever, but you have to make a vintage style bathing suit. So if you've been around on this channel for a little while you will remember that about this time last year I made a 1950s swimsuit, I sewed it, you know, and uh, that was using one of those simplicity reprint patterns. Uh, I think it's 8139. It's quite a popular pattern. I do recommend it. It's just as always with those big four patterns, the sizing. And so because I'd done that last year, I wanted to do something different this year. And so I've not only gone a decade earlier and I'm making a 1940s swimsuit, but I'm also knitting it. I have talked about this a little bit as well in my previous knitting roundup videos, but if you haven't seen that or you can't be bothered to go and watch it, essentially I've chosen a pattern that is unfortunately very small. You may know that vintage knitting patterns generally only come in one size. Yes, it's not inclusive and it sucks. Even I have to grade these patterns up. Uh, so this pattern I ended up grading up substantially to fit in the hips. So this project turned out to be a little bit of an experiment because I had to do so much grading. The pattern I think is originally for a 34 inch hip. So I had to grade it up essentially six inches uh, for the trunks. Uh, it went a little bit awry with the top. I will go into that more as we get to it. So not only was I grading this pattern up much more than I usually do, I also uh, had not only substituted the yarn, obviously it was a vintage yarn that's not available anymore, but I also changed the fiber. I talked about in that last video about it suggests wool. <laughs> which while I do know, like the dress historian in me knows, of course, they made bathing suits out of wool. I've seen them firsthand. I've seen, you know, historical extant examples of Janssen's and things like that. And even, you know, Victorian bathing dresses and things like that. They're all made out of wool serge. While that makes sense in terms of uh, warmth, it doesn't make sense in terms of absorbency and like elasticity, because of course, wool stretches out of shape really badly with weight. Uh, so it's also just I have very sensitive skin and wool I find really itchy at times and seeing as a swimsuit is quite an intimate garment I decided to save myself a lot of uh, discomfort and I, I switched the yarn for a cotton instead. I think that's all I've got to say for now so let's start knitting. So the pattern I'm using came from this teenage book by Stitchcraft. I found this really interesting as we so often think of the teenagers in 1950s phenomenon but here it is in the 40s. I also like that it has the name of the original owner on it, so thank you, Miss A. Taylor. The swimsuit is described as sun top and trunks. So to me, this suggests that this costume wasn't actually intended for swimming, but more frolicking elegantly on the beach. You can see here the yarn requirements and sizing, etc. Very small. For reference, I'm 90 centimeter bust and 101 centimeter hips, which is about 35.5 inches and 40 inches respectively. So I actually began by grading the pen up using a spreadsheet. I also had to play with the tension because getting nine and a half stitches to the inch with four ply weight yarn was tricky. I ended up more like nine and that's mostly due to the shrinkage of the pattern. This is the yarn I'm using. It's Millimere Naturally Soft Cotton. The lighter shade I've had in my stash for ages, so I just bought the contrast shade. I bought 100 grams, which should have been more than enough as three ounces is more like 85 grams, but I ended up having to buy another 50 grams because I didn't take into account just how much I had graded up the trunks. And so we begin knitting the trunks at the crotch seam, casting on in the lighter shade. Then we can start knitting the pattern. The first two rows of the pattern are stocking stitch and done in the lighter color. You then join in the contrast shade and begin the pattern. It's that very familiar 1940s technique of slipping the same stitch over several rows to get the V or bunny ears effect. Only for this pattern, you don't work in stocking stitch. Instead, you want all the pearl bumps on the right side. So the first row is knit, slipping every fourth stitch. This means you get the lighter color overlapping the contrast color. Then the next row is also knit in the contrast color, still slipping those lighter stitches. You may spot I made a mistake here because I forgot to keep the yarn on the wrong side of the work as I slipped the stitches. Unfortunately, I didn't realize until I got to the next row, but I was able to fix each stitch as I got to it while working the next row, which this time is purl, 
The next two rows in the pattern are worked in the lighter shade, but to do that we need to join on a second ball of yarn as the live yarn from the previous lighter rows is at the wrong end of the knitting. I suppose you could cut it and reattach it, but I chose to carry my yarns up the edge to avoid weaving in lots of ends. Once I'd sorted out that tangled mess, the next row is a stocking stitch, but wrong side first, so the purl, then knit. Then we do another set of the contrast with V, but we offset the V so that it forms a brickwork pattern and is in the middle of the Vs of the previous set. We're also starting on a wrong side row, so we purl the first and second row and then knit the third row of course, still slipping those lighter stitches. And then once that row is finished, that's the 10 rows pattern repeat complete. So now, keeping the pattern correct, we begin shaping the lower edge of the trunks by casting on at the beginning of every row. You start by casting on two stitches for a certain number of rows, then three stitches for a certain number of rows, then four stitches. This was where I began making my changes to grade the pattern up. Instead of casting on two stitches at the beginning of the next 12 rows as suggested by the pattern, I did two extra rows of cast on two and then the same again for cast on three and cast on four. This gave me the two extra inches I needed for half of the trunks, so four inches total for the whole trunks. It also gave me a bit of extra length to help make the crotch depth a bit longer to make room for the curve of my, uh, derriere. Here I'm just playing with the settings on my camera because it really isn't picking up the correct colours of these blues. They're both much greener in real life, so this is a moment just to show the accurate colour, but you can see this kind of makes the footage very cool and kind of murky, so we won't be continuing with that. Instead, I took up position in my favourite spot in the garden to crack on with my knitting. Yes, this was pre-haircut. I've been working on this project for a while and I love that I'm wearing my handmade swimsuit from last year while knitting a handmade swimsuit. Once all the increases were done, you decrease every sixth row until you get to the required stitches for the width of the waist. Mine, of course, was more than the pattern, and then knit straight until eight and a half pattern repeats have been completed. Then the rib is worked and a row of eyelets made to thread a cord through before casting off. And this is what the finished front looks like. The back is worked exactly the same as the front, but there are a few short rows added before the ribbing to shape the shorts for the small of the back. This was done quite simply, knitting to a certain number of stitches, then turn, knit back the other way, then turn, and so on. The tricky bit was keeping the pattern correct and changing the colours. Then with the short rows complete, you knit across all the stitches with the lightest colour and work the rib exactly as for the front. You can just about see what I mean about the difficulty with keeping the pattern correct in this clip. Having done all that knitting, I thought I'd better tack the trunks together and try them on for size. Amazingly, they fit. I was worried that grading up so much would distort the proportions or I wouldn't have enough length to get over my bum, but it was fine. I know from speaking to Engineering Knits about her similar 1940s swimsuit that the crotch can be really weird, but mine seemed to be okay. The ribbed waistband is a bit loose, but I guess that's why you run a cord through those eyelets. I was also concerned about them being a bit short, but of course there is still the ribbing to add to the bottom. But I was satisfied enough with the trunks to move on to the sun top. I did originally grade up the sun top as well, but in the end I stuck with the original pattern sizing because once I casted on the number of stitches, I could tell it was going to be too big. It actually ended up still being too big, but more on that later. I also changed to a circular needle for this because it's nearly 200 stitches and I hate having things crammed on a straight needle. The top begins with a rib, like the waistband of the trunks, and then we work in exactly the same V-stitch pattern for one repeat. The top has these triangular gussets that are worked separately from the rest of the top, starting on just one stitch and then increasing to form a triangle. I slipped the gusset stitches onto a safety pin as a stitch holder and completed the row of the pattern and then came back to the gusset stitch on the pin to work the gusset. This again was a tricky process of keeping the pattern correct while increasing and not twisting the stitch for the gusset, which just happened to be one of the slip stitches, so it was loose and really difficult to manipulate, but I did manage. 
Once I manage to complete the gusset, that goes back onto the safety pin come stitch holder and is repeated for the other gusset, which then looks like this. Then I knit the other sections of the sun top to be the same height as the gussets one at a time, so the right first, then middle, then left. Now making sure to keep the pattern correct, knit across the first section, then take the first gusset off of the stitch holder and knit across those stitches and repeat for the other gusset, so that all the stitches are now live on the needle. The top of the swimsuit is then shaped by casting off at the beginning of each row before finally casting off the middle section. Seeing as I was about to pick up every stitch along this cast off edge, I wish I had just put them on a stitch holder instead, but oh well. So then to complete the sun top, the rib is picked up all along the cast off edges. Getting this even across the diagonal edges was tricky and required some maths, but I figured it out and then it's just knit one, power one rib before casting off. This I did quite loosely, but I regretted it when the sun top turned out to be too big. Then it was onto the making up and the finishing. I began by sewing the gussets in place and then the center of the sun top was gathered up. I also plaited a cord for the trunks from Contrast Yarn, but I forgot to mention that bit in this next clip. Okay, so here we go, the swimsuit is finished. Uh, I got a little bit carried away and forgot to film the last few stages, so I thought I'd just talk you through them. So I uh, stitched up the side seams on the trunks and then picked up the rib and knitted it and then joined the crotch seams. So um, pretty straightforward. I did the same thing uh, as I did for the top of the bikini, you know, just picking up and knitting the rib. And then on the bikini top, I crocheted my crochet skills are rather limited, but, uh, you know, I can just about do this sort of crochet where you do it along the edge of the knitting. And so I made my buttonholes and on the other side as well, I've sewn on my buttons. And uh, so that's just to create like the little placket, the overlap. And then I crocheted these straps. It's wet at the moment because it's blocking. Uh, but yes, I had to do quite a lot of fiddling to get it to work because unfortunately the top has turned out quite a bit too big uh, which is a surprise because it should be too small according to the pattern so that's probably a tension wool to cotton negative ease thing uh, so the in the diagram the straps were like uh, crossed over at the back and I found that it's actually better for me to have them be halter because then I get a bit more bust support as you shall, shall see and I also um, was able to get a bit more of a, a closer fit by uh, gathering it up a bit more. Not this way, but this way. So I've got three lines of gathers here to sort of really get this bit nice and close to the chest. So there we have it. That's the last few stages. What I've got to do now is wait for it to dry and then I'm ready for my holidays. And now I present to you Claude at the beach. Oh, and of course, the finished swimsuit. <laughs> I am really thrilled with how this came out in the end, and I was even able to go in the sea. It was really windy, and I was worried about losing my hat, but I still had a lot of fun splashing about in my vintage swimsuit. Unfortunately, you can see that the top is just too big. The rib isn't tight enough, and so the whole thing just wants to slide down. If it weren't for the straps, it'd be around my waist. <laughs> But I love the look of the trunks, and they fit perfectly. I had a lot of fun pretending to be a 1940s pinup, although it didn't all go to plan. <laughs> but this handy bit of driftwood made a perfect prop for my photo shoot. If you'd like to knit this pattern for yourself, the pattern is now available in my Etsy shop and I shall leave a link to the Vintage Pool Party playlist for even more vintage swimsuit inspiration. I really hope you enjoyed this vintage knitting project, let me know what you think of my finished swimsuit, and stay tuned for more vintage knitting videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.